Welcome back to the lab, your place for tutorials, travel and inspiration. I'm pretty sure you have seen this salesman from Squid Game and there are some very viral edits going on on social media. Today I will show you how to achieve this look and how to learn the technique for this editing style. For copyright reasons I will use my own footage and the own music to this. I've put a link down in the description from the reference video. So all I've done so far is I put all the clips into DaVinci and I've cut the clips roughly to the length I want it to have. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we want to achieve this special color grading. So we go inside here and we create with Option or Alt S five nodes. Take the first one, open up the effects here, go down to color space transform and just type in how you filmed this. In my example, it's filmed with Sony s count 3 Cine and S-Log3. And we transform this to the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. And here on the second last note, I do also the color space transform and put it from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec 709. This is the output we want to have. When you edit on Windows, take Rec 709. And when you edit on Mac, take Rec 709A because of the gamma shift. Then select the second node and just do some basic color adjustments until you're happy with your image. Maybe when you have a lot that looks nearly the same, just take that. In my example, I have a lot from Sam Calder I want to put in. Just decrease the strength a bit. Maybe back here, a little bit up. So this is just roughly the look I want to, to achieve. And now we need to, to sharpen this image to get that very unique look. So with the last note selected, we have here Go up here to the search tab and type in texture pop and put it onto it. First, you won't see anything. Then you can increase the detail strength here and the strength alone too. All the magic behind this special look is here in the texture pop. With these sliders, you can achieve the look very, very good. When you're happy with the result, just copy them to all the other clips. Next one is we need a track and I really like to work with Epidemic Sound because up here in Workspace you have workflow integrations and have here Epidemic Sound. And I really like the workflow integration here so I have it directly in DaVinci Resolve so I don't need to download the track and import it and whatsoever. So I just go up here and I searched here for a dark beat and I just searched a song I, I really like for this edit. And I thought this one would be very cool. So I can go down here and just select how long I want the track to have. I can click here, 15 seconds. Now it will create a 15 second version for me. And when I'm not happy, I select here the area I want to have. I want to prefer this one and create a new version. So it will create from this area here a new version. And when I'm happy with this, I can just click here on download and I have it directly in my media pool drag and drop it and finish. This is why I like to work with Epidemic Sound. I'm not sponsored, but I put a link down in the description below if you want to check it out for you. So next one for the edit, you can select the clip with your right mouse button and show music beats. This is only available in DaVinci Resolve 20. And if you're on DaVinci Resolve 19, just go through the timeline and set markers where the beats are. So the intro scene is a bit longer and we will track it like the beginning of the reference video and then we do this fast editing style. But let's start with the length of the clip. So I listen to my track. I will start somewhere around here with the edit. So I put the clips together here and here on every beat I will change the scene. So I just put the clips together and when you play it back it looks something like this just a very basic edit we have so far so I select every clip and I make here change clip speed and put it to 50% so I filmed everything with 50 frames per second so it's now 25 frames per second so we have a smooth slow motion 
it's up to your decision if you want to have 100% or 50. In my opinion, it looks better to have it in slow motion. So now we start here with the first clip where we do this tracking. Now it's very important that you create with every single one a new fusion clip because later we will copy the adjustments we do in the fusion page and to copy them over we need to have every single one in a new fusion clip to start at frame zero. I will explain that closer a bit later. Just select everyone and create a new fusion clip and then we can start with the tracking. So select the first one and open it in the fusion. With the media in selected hit shift and spacebar and type in tracker. Then set it to a high contrast a point that's in the whole scene visible. I place it here on his nose. Adaptive mode best match and track it back and forth. In this little window you can watch if the tracker does a good job. When the tracker is finished go to operation, match move, background only. So the whole image gets sticked to the nose. And then with the tracker selected hit shift and spacebar type in transform and just zoom in a little bit to get rid of the borders around that will be created. So, and as you see, we have this head tracking movement like in the reference video. To give this a little bit more spice, select this clip, go right here to the inspector and enable dynamic zoom and click on swap. So we have in the whole scene just a little dynamic zoom into it that gives a bit more tension. And now I will show you the technique to achieve this special look in, in between the transitions. So select the first clip and open it in the fusion. Then with the media in selected, hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. We just need one transform node for this. At the first frame, set a keyframe on the size and go to the last frame and also set a keyframe on the size at one. Then go to the middle of the clip and put the size to 1.4. Now when you open your splines up here, enable transform and click here on this little icon zoom to fit so your curve should look something like this we are here at one all the way up to 1.4 and down back to one with command or control a select everything and then just press s to smoothen this curve take this handle down here put it up here take this handle put it up here so we have a curve like so when you've done this curve, go up here to settings, go to motion blur and put motion blur to around 4 and shutter angle to 230, somewhere around here. Then select the transform node, press command or control C to copy it, go back to the edit page and now when we watch this, it looks like this, very smooth zoom in and out. And we will do the same thing with the next clip, but in reverse. So we do that a bit later. So we've done it with this first clip, then skip this one. We go directly to the third clip. Go to the first frame, open it in the fusion and just copy this one over. Now you see we have here this curve as well. When your beat is not the same speed every time, you need to adjust the curve here. So maybe your marker is somewhere around here. You need to select this one and by holding down shift, you can drag this keyframe over. But in my example with my track, every beat has exactly the same length. So this works perfectly like that. Now, once again, we skip this clip. We go to Fusion Clip 6, open it in the Fusion page, Copy it inside, go back, clip 8, open in Fusion, Command V to copy it in, next clip 10, open in Fusion, copy it in, and so on. How many times you want to repeat that? So when we play this back, you can see every second clip has this little zoom in. So the clips in between, we open here the first one or the second clip in this example open it in the fusion now you can copy this transform here into it but now we need to reverse that so here at the first frame we go here to the keyframe and we want to have 1.4 in the middle we want to have 1.0 and at the end 1.4 again so we just reversed this curse 
Once again, here zoom to fit, command or control A and S to smoothen it. And now you put these handles down here. So now it did exactly the opposite. So with the first clip we zoom in and here we zoom out. And when we watch it, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. And this is the technique behind these edits. Now go back into here, take this transform, copy it. And now with the remaining clips, open them in the fusion, copy it in. Next one, open in fusion. And when you've done it with the last clip, just let it pre-render and it should look like this. So this is the first zoom effect. Now I will show you a second zoom effect you also see in this edit. So I take a clip here where I zoom in and this is basically just a normal zoom in, not a zoom in and then a zoom out. So we open this clip up in the fusion, then we select the transform node, enable it here so we can see it in the splines. And we don't want to have a zoom in and then back a zoom out. We want to zoom in and then at the end, once again, a fast zoom in. And this creates the other seamless transition we have. So we go here to the last frame. Then here, instead of one, we type in 1.4. And here, the middle keyframe, we can just delete that one. Then command A and S, zoom to fit. And we have a curve like so. So it zooms in very hard, then it almost stops, and at the end it zooms further in. And when we copy this transform node, go to the next clip, delete that one and copy it in, we have the same curve here. Here on Fusion Clip 6 and 7, we zoom in, it stops, zoom further in, and while it zooms in with the motion blur, it gives that seamless transition. This is the technique behind this viral edit. And the last thing I will show you in this edit is this shutter transition. This is also very easy. We have a built-in transition in DaVinci. So I do it here with the last four clips. Maybe I'll do them a little bit faster so it's better visible. So I just trim them here in half, like so. Then go up here to effects. Then you have here video transition and down here on motion you have this slide transition. It's very important that you take the slide and not the push transition. Just drag and drop it here over the clips. You will notice it's not working and this is because we have a fusion clip here and we are at the end of the clip. We need some more space over here. To avoid that, right mouse button, open it in the timeline and just drag this clip longer here. Click up here and go back to your edit. So when you take this here, you see these lines around here, the white line, we have way more space here with the clip. And this is what we need to add the transition. Here on the shorter clips, we can do it a bit faster by pressing T. So we have here this trim edit mode, then go in the middle of the clip until you see this icon. And when you press it, you can see the white border around and just drag it to the left. So it's so it's pretty much the same on both sides and do this with every clip. And here the last one, I will trim it at the beginning. So we have enough space to add this transition. Like this, you can avoid this. So we put this here in between, make the transition around four frames, should be more than enough. Preset, we want to have it top down. So the frame comes from top down here or you can have it from left to right or from right to left or down to up as, as you want it to have. Very important, put the motion blur up to around 0.6. So when you see this, it flips down and ease in and out. Very important, it makes the whole scene way smoother. So when we play this, the new clip comes in like that. Then just take this clip and by holding down Option or Alt, you can just drag it over. And like this, you have every time the same transition. So now when we watch this edit, it should look something like this. So, and these are three techniques they use in this salesman edits. 
The first one is the head tracking, the second one is the zoom transition and the last one is this slide transition. With that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.